Welcome everyone to this edition of Top Tips from Galaxy Australia. In this format, we have a live demo of some top tips, and then we open it up to some, some questions from the audience where the Galaxy team will do their best to answer them. These sessions are designed to help you save you time, streamline your data analyses, and make it easier to get your research done on Galaxy Australia. Today, we're joined by Dr. Gareth Price, who is project lead for Galaxy Australia, and he's going to be sharing his top tips for staying organized while you're working in Galaxy Australia. Over to you, Gareth. Thank you. So it's easy to look back at the end of your analytical journey and realize that maybe you've accumulated hundreds, if not thousands of files. You're not quite sure where you've kept things. This applies to the lab as equally as it applies to your uh, informatics journey. So today's top tips are a collection of observations we have from running Galaxy, from seeing the behavior of users and ourselves to help you stay organized uh, in your Galaxy experience and streamline your Galaxy work. So I'm starting with a fresh, empty Galaxy profile. I'm already logged in, and I'm gonna just show you some of the tips for really laying the groundwork for a, an easily rediscoverable Galaxy experience. So we have our new unnamed history here on the right-hand side of the screen. And there's a couple of features which uh, I wanna highlight today. So the first one, which is core to Galaxy is the pencil icon that allows you to edit elements of the Galaxy history. In this particular case, I can do something as simple as name the history to allow me to discover it. Uh, in terms of staying organized, I might go further than that and name it by today's date, 2nd of October. And this way, when I'm navigating my multi-histories or my many histories, of which I have quite a number, I now at least know that when I created this and gave it a name, I can come back and search on. That gets captured. I can go further to annotate the history. And an annotation can be really anything that you choose. Uh, a DOI, a digital object identifier for a data source you have for the data you're bringing in, a motivation, a project ID, a grant ID, whatever it is that you need to feel confident when you inspect this history later, that you know where you derive your source material from. In this particular case, I'm going to embed the URL that is motivated by the top tips series into my history. So this just means next time I have a look at this, that annotation is there, there it is there in my history. It's a good reminder of the motivation for creating the history and the source of, of that inspiration. And I can go further, and, and this is something that I think is, is visually quite attractive when you use Galaxy, but exceedingly powerful as well. And that is to add tags to your history. Uh, you'll see on my screen, I have a collection of pre-populated tags. If you've not used them before, this will be an empty list. But a tag is, is anything that you need to do to help you remember, uh, again, what the motivator for this history is. So I just type that in and hit return and you can see top tips has been captured as a tag uh, with a, essentially a random color the color wheel just goes through and selects the color um, i could also find uh, for example project doi one two three four for my uh, long-term records and there we go so we have tagged our history and, and this is really setting it up again for rediscoverability and you'll hopefully see the power of this shortly as we go through the tips now i want to show you a similar process but what you might do as your history populates with files uh, i could upload data um, but this has been very nicely shown by dr anna Symes in one of the previous tool tips so i am actually just going to go to some preloaded data in galaxy just for expediency which also allows me to showcase the data libraries where we host a lot of data for your benefit. In this particular case, I'm going to our Australian copy of the Galaxy Training Network material. 
I'm just going to go to the first topic, assembly, the first tutorial, genome assembly, and step through till I arrive at some data. In this particular case, this library has four data sets, two from Illumina, two from Nanopore, and both tagged with tiny or reduced. I'm going to add them to my history as data sets to my top tips history. And there we go. So now I have uh, four pieces of data in my history. And you all have seen that those data sets have quite long names. So I might be motivated at this point in time to do a lot of different things to those particular names. But we're going to stay on the topic of annotating, tagging, and constructing for ourselves uh, a better visibility on our data. So one, I'm going to step through these. The first one I'm going to come to is the first file. It has a couple of features that I might want to capture. It has in its title Illumina, and it has reduced, and I can observe the word reduced repeated in my other data type, Nanopore. The naming is also quite long. So there are a couple of things I can take advantage of here. I, could, I use the pencil icon to edit again. I'm going to, be, going to grab that URL and bring it down to annotation. I could also put it in info and say from GTN. Either way, I'm just capturing more information than it already exists. And the name I could call Illumina Reduced or arguably Sweet Potato Reduced as Sweet Potato is in the title. And I've saved that. So now I have that shorter name, but I also have it annotated better so that I can actually remember found from GTN uh, uploaded faster file with an annotation. So that's one way. I now have made sure of from provenance. I've kept the source material, which is the annotation. I've provided some info and now I'm going to tag the file. The tagging. I've got a number of options. I've noted, as I've already said, that this is Illumina data. So I'm going to tag it with Illumina. And I'm also going to tag it with reduced. So I've given it two different tags as a file. And they show up regardless of the data peak, either as small or expanded. I can quickly step through the rest of these and add tags for Illumina again. And tiny. So now my two files are tagged with Illumina and with a description based on what data set size they are. I can continue to do this through my history and I can also incidentally do this on bulk in a number of different ways. I can do it through upload and through some functionality I'm going to show you here. The best place to go and find all this uh, richer content is at the Galaxy Training Network, but this is the tips for today. So we have our files, we're starting to tag our files, which is a power for when you analyze, uh, that tag will propagate through all results. So very easily, you can use the search function in your history to find anything named or tagged with tiny and same for Illumina. So the next thing I want to do is recognize that my history is already four items long, but that's a fairly small set. One could easily imagine any real biological experiment with multiple repeats or a time course or just many hundreds of individuals collected that that raw data, that data you've ingested into Galaxy could be a very large list of files. And when choosing a tool and choosing each of those files one by one, that's potentially error prone to making sure that you capture everything in your analysis. So Galaxy has a very nice function uh, akin to a folder structure on a computer. So it's not novel, but it is nice. And that is something called collections. You can activate collections on upload, uh, which needs to be an active choice as you bring the file in. In many cases, you're not necessarily sure you how and what structure your collection needs. So you do this organization once your data arrives. In this case, uh, we can activate that by using the tick icon 
to select our files, I'm going to select the two files with Illumina in the title, well, or in the tag in this case. And when I selected them, an additional menu popped up in my history. So I got this select options here, if I can name. Two out of four selected, which gives me a list of functions I can now do on these files. The language is a data set list, list pair, list pairs and collections, all are the same core activity. They are building a collection for Galaxy. So I'm going to build a data set list, uh, taking my two files, I'm going to hide the original elements. So they're not going to be deleted from my history. They're just going to be pushed to an invisible state to make me easier for me to see my history. And I'm going to call this Illumina, create collection. What you'll see now is files one and two have disappeared. And I have a collection now called Illumina, which has my files neatly inside it. You can actually build overlapping collections. So if you want a collection of all your Illumina data, but you want a collection that is a subset of all the uh, male samples or female samples, young versus old, you can build multi-layered collections. So now we have a succinct history, which itself is annotated, tagged. We have collections built in here, which are well organized. They themselves have tags. But you can imagine that the next thing you might like to do is tag these collections so that you can have a visual clue here and a trackable clue for what's in a collection. This uh, contextual menu, we just need to activate by clicking on a file. And now one of the options we didn't pursue before but do now is add tags. Nano 4 and return will give us a tag. And the same for Illumina. So now we have a history that is well set up, allows us to compute quality control, assembly, post-assembly, metrics, whatever we want. And those words, Illumina and Nanopore, will propagate through your history and through your files so that as you build your analysis, you can quickly refer to uh, the data type that was used to generate that result. So hopefully I've showed just there some uh, high level tips on how to deal with a single history. But as your Galaxy journey grows, uh, the next most likely thing you are to do is to deal with multiple histories. Uh, one of the tips for staying organized is please put individual experiments in individual histories. Uh, histories can be very long. They can have hundreds, if not thousands of items, but they're much easier for you, quite frankly, if each history is a defined experiment. I have clicked on the history button in my tool menu on the left-hand side, and this has brought up my many pages of histories. And I can actually go through these histories. Um, I can search for them by any metric. I know I have a number referred to uh, QUT for the University in Queensland, and you can see they also do have some tags. They have a training tag associated. I can search on that tag, and it will bring up both the history or the tags associated with training. This history button also shows histories that are shared with me by uh, other members of Galaxy publicly accessible histories I have um, access to through the server and a newish feature archive histories. I can also stay organized, and this is a, a very great way to stay organized, actually using the history multi viewer. So I've just encouraged you to think about histories as a repository of individual experiments but it's not unusual to think with time, you may collect data from multiple his individual histories and bring them together into a new meta-analysis. If you want to do that, the history multi-viewer is the place to go. It allows you to select uh, histories in the same way you could before. You can search on here. You'll populate this middle screen with uh, 
your active histories or those you choose. So here is the one we're working on today. It's currently highlighted as the current history. And I can bring from any other history, I'm going to bring from this particular one, a file by simply dropping and dragging it into my history. Everything about that file comes over. So it's provenance, the data it was recorded on comes over. You could see the tag that I had given it in the previous history also comes over into the new history. Now, what doesn't come over and is worth noting is that the file itself is now number 11 in the top tips history. It is not number 36 in this particular QUT history. And when I come to look at this in a month or six months time, I might not remember where I grabbed it from. So a nice little tip, if you're going to use this drop and drag feature, and I highly recommend you use it, it saves you re-uploading data. So if you want to reanalyze raw data, don't worry about uploading it again, drag it back from another history. That's a really powerful way of maintaining your total quota, uh, but also saving you time on uploads. I want to make sure this particular file is something I can remember. Uh, and B, a nice easy tip is to quickly switch to this particular history, uh, QUT 2023, and just grab the name of that history. I've copied that into memory switch back to my active tooltips history and annotate this file as we talked about before. It's already actually going to have some information and annotation based on the tool itself. So I can just drop that in there. Oops, and say from history, QT morning, save. And now that's captured at least some minimal provenance. Uh, arguably, if you're thinking four steps ahead, uh, it is possible that I change the name of this history and break that provenance, in which case I would strongly encourage you to use the share and publish function in Galaxy to create a, a more permanent URL for the history and embed the URL in here. If you have a view to share your histories with someone, I strongly encourage you to annotate them as best as you can. So we have looked at history uh, tagging and annotation file tagging and annotation, collection annotation and tagging. One of the other tips and the last tip for now about uh, staying organized on Galaxy is something I've referred to once or twice, which is your quota on Galaxy. So we are a service and an analytical service, not a data warehousing service. So we maintain quotas for all our users uh, and it varies uh, on your provenance yourself, so your identity as admin, I'm afforded a large quota. If this is creeping up to 100%, uh, you can still use Galaxy. Your new jobs will not run until you bring it under 100%. Please get in contact with us to help you manage it. But also, as a user, under your preferences, you have a storage dashboard. And the storage dashboard is a very powerful place for you to understand your total usage of our service. So you get a very clear statement uh, up the top about how much you're using. You can refresh this activity uh, if you have been actively deleting or managing your own histories. And you can also um, double check that everything that you've asked to be deleted and purged is purged off the system uh, to help you free up this space. If those kind of activities mean that you're still curious about your total profile on Galaxy and you need more storage or you're planning to bring in a lot of data for a large analysis, uh, I strongly encourage you to use this visually explore your data usage by history option. And this will bring up uh, your largest histories. It will also bring up those uh, both active and deleted, uh, and which is great. Uh, this has already dropped in the last 24 hours since I've been managing it. But this shows you which histories are the largest on your service, uh, sorry, in your particular account and gives you the option of managing them actively by saying, do I need that anymore? Can I archive it off to a, uh, your own university or academic storage system? Uh, was it needed for training? Do I basically need it? And how am I going to use it again? So you can see in my particular profile, even though I'm not 
close the quota, I have two very large histories that are my big offenders. And if I want to manage my storage profile, I am dealing with uh, collectively this 220 odd gig of data it captured in only those two histories. So with that, um, that is a tour through some of our collective tips and observations on how to manage your storage profile on Galaxy, how to manage your histories, how to make your histories easy for you to come back and rediscover and continue your analytical journey on and hopefully share with your colleagues, students or supervisors um, and make their understanding of your history cleaner by doing some low level prep and uh, work up front. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Gary. That was an awesome overview of all the different ways you could stay organized. I really love how the, the tags pull through your history. Is that, that's super powerful. I was wondering if there's a limit to the number of tags that I could add to a file. Not that we've experienced. So practically, you have a whole rainbow of tags you can use there. And as I uh, hinted, yes, you can have, I guess, an onion. Collections work as an onion layer. So you can have all Illumina data, all uh, sample size data, age data, and each of those many tags will propagate through the file structure. When you showed us how to update the name of a data set, is there a way that we could do that to multiple ones at the same time? So like you've got lots and lots of data in there? Yes. So um, there are two ways. I won't um, go back and share this as deep as detail and again, encourage people to get onto the training network to find richer documentation on this. Um, however, yeah, in the upload menu, uh, there are rule and collection buildings that allow you to manipulate multiple files on mass. And it may be something as simple as bringing in a text file of your preferred names and just doing a cross match between the text file and your history afterwards. Cool. When you showed the storage quota, what would you do if your storage quota was full uh, and you needed and you wanted to keep all of the data for some reason? Yeah, so um, we absolutely understand the burst nature of research. And uh, even despite best planning, there are times where you're going to need a little bit of extra space to complete your work. Uh, so you'll find on our landing page, there is a request form under our support menu that allows users to simply just ask for a larger quota for a time period. Please ask if you need is the short answer. So another question here, uh... It's what we what you're showing is organizing data that you've used from a previous job with a lot of that, like bringing histories. And the, the question is, can you create a new history or data set when you upload data before you run anything? Yes, you can. So um, before you've uploaded anything, you can actually essentially pre-prepare a history. So that would uh, use that uh, plus icon in your history. This can be done before upload. And you can go to the full effort of uh, naming it, annotating it, tagging it. Arguably, you can even share an empty history with someone else if they are the ones going to bring data into it. Um, but yes, you can do all that work prior to actually uploading a data set. My, uh, my last question would be, sometimes running a result or running a job takes a long time. Um, and so then I want to use that again later for a different job without having to wait for it to run for a very long time. Can I reuse it in a new history? Yes, absolutely. And, and thank you. That's a great, I guess, optimization of Galaxy. So why recompute something? If you've annotated it and you can rediscover it, you can drag it into a new history uh, and compute again instant again uh, without having to wait for that result. So uh, we see that across all life science domains that turning your raw data into some kind of mappable or analyzable data often takes the effort and then you want to reanalyze it over and over. Just drag that analyzed data set across as many histories as you need to finesse your analysis steps afterwards. Thanks, Gareth. Um, and thank you everyone for attending and for your questions. 
Remember, you can always ask for help if there's not a top tips drop in session running by clicking help and then support. Uh, thank you again, Gareth, for sharing your top tips for staying organized. Thanks very much, Gareth, and we'll leave it there for today.